Hi, I'm Stephanie, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Let's Talk Film, a series where contemporary women get a chance to have their voices heard on the latest film releases. Today's film we'll be reviewing is the independent, award-winning film, Beasts of the Southern Wild, co-written by Lucy Alibar and Ben Zeitlin, and directed by Ben Zeitlin. I am sitting in Bees Desserts, a delightful and charismatic Brazilian cafe. It is located here on Greenwich Avenue in the West Village. This largely residential neighborhood featuring beautiful carriage-style townhouses was once the mecca of the downtown art scene and beat movement of the mid-20th century. But this busy avenue is now home to international cuisine and specialty boutiques favored by both locals and regulars alike. And Bee's Desserts, with its luscious back garden, charming appeal, and signature honey cakes are sure to place you in a Brazilian state of mind. Let's sit out back and grab a sweet treat. I'm here with Barry, a server at Bee's Desserts. So can you recommend something on your menu that you think we should try? Mm -hmm. uh, the desserts, of course. The cakes are very delicious. Um, the sweet crepes are very delicious over here. Oh. The best so far. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for doing this interview for Let's Talk Film. Let's go meet the panelists. Our first panelist is Kyla Upshaw. Kyla is an athletic musician who hosts and produces an eminent show called Work It, which is about the culture of fitness and the importance of staying healthy. Closing out our panel is Micheline Kess. Micheline is an illustrator and graphic novelist from New York City who loves using her art to tell stories that empower and inspire the imagination of children. Today's film we'll be reviewing is the award-winning independent film, Beasts of the Southern Wild co-written by Lucy Alibar and Ben Zeitlin, and directed by Ben Zeitlin. So, would you consider this to be a fable or fantasy tale about Hurricane Katrina? I think that they probably used elements of the, the Katrina uh, tragedy, but I think that um, that area in particular, because it is one of the poor, poorest communities in the country, um, had their own tale, and I think that they really kind of showed that uh, that aspect of the culture of what happens in, you know, the rural part of the Mississippi Delta. You know, um, when, when they were doing the, the, the movie, decided, okay, you know, we, we, we'll use elements of things that happened um, with Hurricane Katrina, but I think that um, that's really, that, that, that's, that's their life. Um, I would have to say I think I saw it as more fantasy than fable since with fables you kind of almost have a, uh, an outcome like a just so kind of thing like you know this is why the way this is. Um, I saw it more as fantasy because uh, the imagery was just so much more uh, fantastical and dreamlike. It was real yet it was not real. It was beautiful yet it was savage and you know there was this really interesting kind of mix of the two things that made it seem like it was something that was a, a place that existed on Earth, yet at the same time not entirely Earthbound. Yeah, I definitely feel like it kind of pulled from fantasy as opposed to fable, uh, very simply because there was so much realism in the story. And it very much could have been just a looking out on someone's culture and the way they lived life minus some of the added kind of mystical elements that the film presented. Some critics have called this film indie film eye candy and an art house minstrel show, um, while others have suggested it resembles a modern day adventure of Huck, Huck Finn, Huck Blair Finn by Mark Twain. Do you agree with either or any of these labels? I think it's offensive actually to say that it was a minstrel show. I think the, the reality of what takes place in that you know part of our country that it was it was pretty an accurate depi depiction. You know, if I think of minstrel like where where you know you're you're buffooning or, or yeah. you know like like there or was creating a, a caricature. Yeah, a caricature. There was there was I didn't think it was a caricature at all. Yeah, I don't I don't see uh, it being very minstrelly. I mean, I could almost see someone who's looking at it in a very superficial way to make a kind of an ignorant comment like that. Right. At the same time, though, you know, in, in today's society, you find that people are often complaining about children, for one thing, being so coddled and so, you know, wrapped up and protected by their parents from the environment. They're not ready to face the world. And mm. this little girl was, was fearless. I mean, she, like, went places. She did things. She 
you know, was very independent and yet she was still a little girl at heart. And so I really uh, fell in love with that aspect of her character. And I thought she was a very strong character, actually. I must say, I definitely feel like um, <clears throat> indie film Eye Candy, uh, that one I can agree with, but Our House Minstrel Show is highly superficial. And it just goes to show how, for me at least, how stuck people are in certain images of African Americans in this country. Because you see a girl with an afro, because she's running around, because she's in the wild, because she's a natural person, because she's in nature, she has to be a minstrel. And I really do hope in time people will come away from those ideals and just enable a character to be a character and see it for what it is, no matter what the ethnicity of the characters may be. Yeah, and I mean, it's not Tyler Perry, and it's not like, you know, a training day crazy, like, action film either. It's yeah. something totally different, and it's nice if, you know, people would embrace that more and kind of step outside of their comfort zone a little bit and, you know, give it a chance. Um, did you find this film inspiring? Why or why not? Um, I think from a creative standpoint, this film really inspired me a lot. It made me want to draw, it made me want to paint, it made me want to cook, um, you know, and, and really kind of try to... Uh, illustrate um, certain aspects of things I saw in the film and you know hopefully I would like to actually do a piece based on the film just like a sketch really? you know and maybe something watercolor yeah so I'm yeah. sure they would appreciate it. you can always go to their website it seems like they have open dialogue with people that appreciate the film oh and awesome. so maybe if you <laughs> uploaded a picture or so then definitely well, not a picture but your image right but <laughs> yes indeed showing survival from you know from the aspect of a, of a child mm. need, learning need learning survival skills and seeing you know that she, you know she was capable and that that we've heard stories of you know you know children or or young people or even adults that have had to go through similar situations. I mean Hurricane Katrina, yes. um, and for her to to be able to overcome it for you know a parent that you know obviously didn't have parent 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 skills. But that the love and and the uh, you know wanting to do the Mutual best admiration yeah yes. for your child like I, I hope that that will always that 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 uh, that'll always show through and respect that's one yeah. thing I would say about their relationship there was a good amount of respect that's true yeah I mean uh, I think she respected him but in certain respects she wasn't afraid of him like yeah he almost you know raised her to kind of be be fearless in a lot of ways and preparing her for like life outside of you know bathtub possibly in the future i think sometimes you need to just maybe have a film let it be a little cerebral let i mean one of the things that i walked away with was some of the philosophy that she spoke in the script and i really loved that and so that i guess in in, in regard inspired me to be more of a better human being just to take nature not for granted but to really look at it the way she did yeah, I, I think that because, you know, she lived in nature in such a way, you know, that she had to understand her her kind of existence in the scheme of things. Like, at a very young age, you could tell that she was constantly questioning her existence. Now, the film has been acclaimed by both Sundance and Cannes Film Festival, as well as many critics, as being one of the most visually stunning films on the indie circuit in quite some time. Do you agree with this observation? Yeah. I thought visually it was uh, it was really impressive. I don't I don't know if it was the most visually stunning film I've ever seen. At the same time, though, I think people are so um, trained oh, on right. CGI and 3D and yeah. you know After Effects and all this stuff that you kind of almost start to expect that. And I I find that the effects used in the film were were very seamlessly integrated. And so maybe it kind of caused you to, or caused me to uh, underestimate it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought it was very beautiful. I don't, I don't know if it was the most visually stunning film. Well, yeah. I think that, um, you know, somebody, like I, I definitely see a lot of uh, blockbuster films. And, yes. and you, you know, you're so used to seeing a, just something that, that um, aesthetically has a certain amount of quality to it. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to adjust. Right, so the way, right, you know, yeah. the, the, the grittiness of the film, it was different. It was some, you know, that, that you could tell um, that, that who did, whoever shot it and the director, ben Richardson, dis ben Richardson yeah. definitely decided that um, they wanted to have a little bit of a, you know, 
that moving moving moment yeah the film was cast with a large number of unknowns mostly from the louisiana area where it was filmed um who had never acted before in your opinion did this work for or against the production i, th I thought it worked for the i mean there was the authenticity of these people americans are good looking people yeah. Overall, down to the from the backwoods to if you if you've traveled and, and gone to Europe and some other places, you realize that Americans, the fact that we're a melting pot and just like a a, a, a mis you know a mismatch of, a of so many, bowl. yeah, that you know poverty does not take away from from good old America. So yeah, um, yeah I think that they were good looking people, but I think that the authenticity of of them actually being Bayou people. Um, would that be considered the, bi the Bayou? I guess so. It's a little, it's yeah. actually a little off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think that that worked. And the fact that they were articulate enough because, you know, I've been around some Bayou people who it's a little hard to understand. Um, you know, it helped the film not be so authentic that it seemed like a documentary. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I thought it was just right. It yeah. Was, yeah, it was believable in that, you know, the people they picked did not look have like a, you know, clean shaven, yeah. crisp edged face or anything like that. But at the same time, like they just, you know, they were, yeah, you could kind of make out what people were saying, you know, unless the booze was flowing. Yes. Um, and yeah, I thought it worked perfectly, actually. Yeah. I must say, I felt like this film was a film of heart and intuition. Mm. And it, it definitely showed in the people the director chose to cast. And everyone melded well together and had a great chemistry. Did you like or dislike this film? I really liked it. You know, I, I love to see black cinema. I, I love to see uh, 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 a, a new, another African-American tale being told. Um, I love that it was a relationship between uh, a father and his daughter. I mean, I can respect that. I have a great relationship with my father and, and seeing, you know, uh, the, the, the strength between the two of them. It was, it was beautiful. I thought it was a really beautiful film. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I thought it was a real treat. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was such a breath of fresh air. Yeah. You know, when you look at, I mean, there's, you know, of course there's movies where you have black people portrayed in, you know, really admirable or heroic lights, but then also there are the really kind of minstrelly movies that are out there, and, you know, I don't think this was one of them. I thought this was great, and I hope that more people see it, actually. So who do you think should see this film, and who do you think will see this film? Uh, I noticed a high level of what seemed like students in the theater at the showing. Um, I would really love more people of color to come and see this movie and to bring their kids and see yeah. the movie. Yeah. Um, I think that would make me really glad to see like people trying to you know, open up their minds to a different mode of storytelling mm -hmm. and, you know, something that makes you think and makes you talk and not have everything just spelled out for you and things like that. I think what would be nice, I mean, this is just, you know, thinking about the perfect world, um, for fathers, for, for African-American fathers to see, I think that, yeah. that one of the misconceptions that, you know, African-American people, or, or not even, let me, let me take that back, but American people in general feel that that a, a functional family comes through um, economics. Mm -hmm. And that, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of fathers leave because they don't have any money. They feel like if I can't support a child financially, I'm not a good father. I think that this movie did a very good job with showing that money did not, money is not love. And I think that, that that gives a great lesson to any father who is questioning his lack of income being the reason why he should be in his child's life. That's powerful. That yeah, was, that was so perfect. Powerful. <laughs> Indeed. If you weren't on this panel, would you have gone to see this film? Yes. I was. I was in once I saw the trailer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. It's indie. It's fantasy. There's like creatures in it. It's right up my alley. I was not interested. So had it not been for this panel, I would not have gone to see this film. Mm -hmm. I must say. But ladies, thank you so much for your fascinating thoughts and comments. We are out of time. Thank you. This thank has been a you. great pleasure. Thank you so much. Yes. I want to extend a word of thanks to Claudia and Philippe for allowing us to shoot here in Bees Desserts. Be sure to check out this episode and more at our website, www.letstalkfilm.com, which is also available on your mobile devices. Until next time, I'm your host, Stephanie Aline. Keep watching and keep talking film.
Mm-hmm.